So the last section, 5.6, is actually a really great section for review because this section reviews everything that we've already learned in Chapter 5. So it's really, it's an awesome section, <laughs> right? But it's dealing with natural logarithms. When you look at your calculator, I don't know if you noticed this, there are two logarithm buttons. There's this one that's L-O-G, see that? And if you look right above it, like in my college case, it's blue, um, the second of that button is a 10 to that because they're inverses of each other, right? Log base 10 and 10 to the are inverses. And if you look right below, ln is also a logarithm and e to the x is its inverse and they're inverses of each other. Now e is available right there in the ln button. It's also over here above your division button. It's a little lowercase e. And now that's not to be confused with the alpha key. See that above your sign in green in my calculator? That's alphabet. Like if you were trying to get your calculator to type hello or something, you would hit alpha H, alpha E, and see it comes out like an E, right? And then where's L? L, L, alpha, O, right? So there's hello. Okay. So it doesn't want you to get those confused. So lowercase e is over here, e to the x. Lowercase e is here above your division in blue. Capital letter E, which is an alphabetical E, is right above your sign. And then above your comma, remember that's scientific notation. So like 2.5 e10, or no, sorry, not 10, e4, enter, is that, right? The decimal is four spots over. Okay, that's the, that's why they do double E right there because they don't want you to get it confused with the E here and here, and they don't want you to get it confused with the alphabetical block letter E, which is above your sign. Even though when you press it, it only comes out as one letter, it's not the same as this alphabetical letter in the word hello. That's the green letter above your sign button, and then this guy right here is above your comma button. I know it's really confusing. So there's four different E's. You got to keep them all straight. Now the question is, what is E? So let me show you. Second above my division sign, there it is. Or if I do ln, second ln, say e to the 1, same thing. It's 2.71828.1828. Now I know it seems like it has a repeating pattern. It actually doesn't. It stops being the same right there. So it, it goes on forever and ever and ever. It has no pattern. It's like pi, like that. It's called an irrational number. So it, it doesn't repeat. You know, like a third is 0.3333333 and it has a pattern to it. The three is repeating. Pi doesn't have that and neither does E. E um, doesn't have a pattern like that, doesn't have a repeating. Poof. I just thought, you know, hey, maybe I'll bring up um, Wolfram Alpha on the subject just so you guys can see. So I don't know if you can see this very well, but E they have a decimal approximation here, and as you can see, it's 718281828459045235368. It has no pattern to it, um, which makes it, among other things, um, an irrational number. And they have a whole bunch of interesting info in here that you don't really care about. Um, and I looked up the Wikipedia page just for the fun of it, and there's Leonard Euler, see? He came up with up to 23 digits by himself without a calculator. And then William Shanks came up with more digits in the 1800s and so on. Okay, And obviously we have computers now, so that's why we're getting in the millions and billions of digits nowadays. But back you know, in the 1700s, <laughs> when you're doing everything by hand, you don't get that many digits. Cool. And by the way, that's Steve Wozniak. That's the guy that owns Apple, <laughs> right? So, or runs Apple. So he in the 1970s came up with 116,000 digits. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so that's what E is. And E is a really important number. I mean, it has its own Wikipedia page and everything. It actually has books. I have a book at home written nothing about nothing but this number um, because it is so important for exponential growth, such as um, in biology class, you'll have like, you know, the growths of cells, the growths of fireflies, not fireflies, fruit flies. Well, fireflies too, honestly. Um, the growths of, you know, trees. You ever notice how like on one day there's a couple leaves and then boom, all the leaves are there, right? It's exponential growth that kind of thing. Accounting and finance, it's a really big deal. That's how your um, retirement accounts get figured. Savings accounts get figured. Any interest rate um, on a credit card is actually exponential growth with E. 
um, exponential decay, which is, includes half-life. We came up with one formula in this course, but there's actually other ones that involve E, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the bell curve, the normal curve, wouldn't be possible without E. It involves, here, I'll Wikipedia it for you. So if you look up, I look at all this information on E. It's, like I said, it's kind of a big deal. But if I look up the normal curve, just so you guys can see it, you know what it looks like. It looks like that. It's that green curve right there. That curve, you can see in the formula, there's the formula for it. You don't need to know all this stuff. It's the E right there. Yeah, that's E, right? It's a big deal for probability. It's a big deal for statistics. It's a big deal for architecture. That's how um, cables and arches, um, there's a curve function for them that involves E, etc. And Leonard Euler is the guy that thought of it, as you saw. He was the person that came with it up to 23 digits um, in the 1700s, and therefore it has his initial. He's the one that first started calling it E. I don't know if he was doing it after his own name, but it sounds good. <laughs> All right, and if you're interested, there's tons more information on E. So now, the natural logarithm. So what happens is, in mathematics, you know, 10's a big deal, log base 10. For one thing, our number system is base 10, that's why you have the 10's place the 100's place the 1000's. But for another thing, like pH is base 10, Richter numbers are base 10. So they're kind of important. But actually more important is base E, this button right down here on the calculator right there. Okay, so the LN button, the log base E is so common and so important that mathematicians who are lazy, yes, you guessed it, lazy, started writing this in a different way. They started writing LN because, well, I'll show you. So we learned that the log base 7 of 2 is equal to 40, no, sorry, of 49 is equal to 2, right? And the reason for that being, that's because, hold on, I'm looking for a double-sided arrow. There it is. 7 to the 2 is equal to 49. Then we learn the log base 10 of 1,000. Oopsie. Doesn't get written that way because they're lazy. So they go, oh, that's the log of 1,000. And then we would say, oh, but that's 3 because 3, or excuse me, 10 to the 3 is equal to a thousand. Okay? And then what happened was they kept trying to do log base E all the time. So log base E of, you know, whatever. There. Yeah, doesn't matter. All right? So they kept saying log base E, log base E, you know, and that got annoying. And mathematicians, who are the laziest people you've ever met, decided, well, I'm not going to write it like that. I'm going to write it this way. Because this is a number, excuse me, that occurs so commonly in nature, I'm just going to write it this way instead. So when you see ln, it's really log base e. Okay? It's just that mathematicians are way too lazy to say that. Okay, And what that means is that you have e to the c power is equal to a. Cool? And that's what this little guy up here is saying. That when you have ln of a equals c, that's really log base e of a equals c. Here, if you like. So ln of a equals c means log base e of a equals c. See that? And that means e to the c is equal to a. Hold on one second. There we go. Kind of simplify that. All right, so in other words, ln of a is equal to log base e of a, right? That's another, what I'm trying to tell you is that ln is just a fast way to write a different logarithm than one you've learned. But all the properties of logarithms we've learned, and we've learned a lot. Um, we've learned that the log base b of 1 is equal to 0, the log base b of b is equal to 1, then we had the power property, we had this property, right? We had all these properties. And also, remember, we also learned that the log of a zero is impossible, and the log of negative number 
is impossible. Don't forget those. Oops, I spelled impossible wrong. There we go. Okay. So we learned that as well back in section 5.2. So all those properties of logarithms that we had, they're still good for ln, because ln is just another logarithm. It's just a logarithm that's base e instead of base, actually I could say log base b, it's not just base 10, any logarithm. Base b, base e, it doesn't matter. They all are impossible for 0 and negative. Every logarithm property we had is still good for ln. Like the adding one still turns to timesing. The subtraction still turns to division. The powers can still be brought down in front and good, all that good stuff. All right, so let's find these logarithms here. So we want the ln of e to the 12. So let's think about this for a second. ln of e to the 12 means what you want is you want the log base e. Oh, rats. Base e, thank you, of e to the 12. Okay, so you're thinking, well, e to what power would get me e to the 12? Did you say 12? Hopefully you said 12, but you can see it a couple ways. You can bring the 12 down in front using the power property, right? So it's 12 log base e of e, but the log base e of e is 1. So this is 12 times 1, which is 12. So in other words, it's 12, right? And again, I generally don't bother writing a log base e. I'm just doing that right here just so you guys can see it, right? But the answer here is 12, because the log base e of e to the something is 12. All right, the log of e, ln of e. Well, right up here, the natural logarithm of e is 1. So ln of e is equal to the log base e of e. Now think about it. e, which is your base, to what power would get you e? 1, right? So there's your answer, 1. All right, now what about this one? Well, again, the log base e, or e to the fourth, what's going to happen there is you're going to have three halves, because you're not doing anything with that, and then you're going to multiply it by 4 ln of e, because you're going to bring the power down in front. Here, here. Hold on one second. Here, three halves ln e to the fourth, right? So you bring this power down in front and write it right there in front of the ln, but ln of e is 1. So this is really 3 halves times 4. And 3 halves times 4, that's um, 12 over 2, and that's 6. So your answer is 6. All right, now what's the ln of 0? Ah, it's impossible, right? Can't take the ln of 0. You can never take. Because what you're saying is e to what power would get me 0? Well, e is 2.7 and some change. You're never going to get 0 out of that. Right? You could take 2 to the 0 power, right? So just don't forget, ln of 1 is 0. That's a different story. Right, because e to the 0 power is 1. But the ln of 0 is impossible. Okay, and they're not the same thing. So you can have a logarithm be equal to 0, but you can't take the logarithm of 0. No good. All right, I think I'm going to stop right there, so that way we can tackle the next problems together, because I want to do these all at once. So I'll see you back here to finish up this example.